Hello and welcome to Mr Ridley's product design and today we're looking at form and function and this is for year 13 product design. By the end of this clip you should be able to know what constitutes both form and function, be able to describe why these features are interrelated and be able to answer exam questions relating to form and function and to more importantly analyse these products for these criteria in those exam questions. So for many years, designers have been faced with the dilemma of which aspect of design should take precedence, i.e. which is more important, designing a product for form or function. Form is basically what a product looks like. This might include decoration or embellishment. It may contribute or it may detract from how the end product, end product works. Function is what a product does or how well it does it. Is it easy to use? Does it do the job as it is designed to do? And does it do the job as well as it possibly can? So that is function. So we're going to look at this form and function. The concept of form follows function is a principle associated with modernist architecture and industrial design in the 20th century. The principle is that a shape or building an object should be primarily based upon its intended purpose. And this would be the best possible design. Form follow function considers that the form of a product which allows it to function best will naturally produce a better product. And here we look at a Dyson which we'll look at later on. So some designers considered it terrible that any product should feature form or looks over the ultimate functionality of a product. So we've got an example of 1959 Cadillac which is incredibly has a lot of features such as these fins and um, just a lot of features which are just not functional at all they're just for looks a product that just something for looks now some designers um so alex isagonis uh, who designed the mini um was a great advocate of function driving form his iconic mini is a prime example of form driven by function and he was a great advocate of form defining function so that everything had a function there was no if you contrast the mini with the cadillac there's no extra bits and pieces. Everything is functional, down to the last, every last component. So Alec hated the then current design trends in America where cars would exhibit fins and unnecessary chrome decoration. He said, I've always felt that stylists such as you have in America are ashamed of a car and are preoccupied with, preoccupied with making it look like something else, like a submarine, an airship. As an engineer, I revolt against this. So he considered that the, the best possible design was something that was incredibly functional. Um, and another episode from car history is um, in 1935 with this um, Chrysler that uh, Chrysler introduced a car with an aerodynamic form. Um, and some car makers thought that aerodynamic efficiency would result in a single optimal auto body shape, a tear sh drop shape, so that all cars would gradually evolve to become the same shape driven by aerodynamics. Um, and Chrysler started with this and then they realized that, they, that, that, that form was more important, that the functionality of aerodynamics was, although now cars have moved towards that, this was an area that, that, that it, it where there was a split. So we're going to look at this this um, product. This is the Jaguar E-Type Series 1. Et of Ferrari described this as one of the most beautiful cars ever made. But is, is it form or is it function? Which, which we're going to look at the two aspects. Obviously, it's a very nice looking car, but where is the functionality? So the long sculpted bonnet these were necessary to ac accommodate the long and tall Jaguar engine so they're, they're actually functional but they also suggest power and performance and contributed to the looks so this bulge here was necessary for to um, clear the engine these punched louvers in the bonnet are functional to let hot air escape but also the the the, the form of them onto the bonnet they are an extra feature allowing you to see the polished engine underneath which is obviously another functional. The aerodynamic shape and fared in headlamps, these fared in headlamps decrease wind resistance and increase top speed. So that they, um, they're very functional, but they um, 
and the wire wheels here, the wire wheels allow airflow to cool the brakes. So both these items, although looking, contributing to the look of the vehicle, are also functional. So by studying manufactured products, you can appreciate that form and function of any product are inextricably linked. It's difficult sometimes to say which is form and which is function. I'm going to have a look now at another product, and this is the uh, Dyson DC39. So let's look at this product in detail and see which are form and which are function. So first of all, these mouldings along the top of the product, this could have just been a, a plain cover that came over this, but these actually uh, follow the actual air paths of the patented dual cyclone system. So this is the system that makes the Dyson work, and these are intended to follow, the, the form of them follows the function. Here you can see that the outer casing mimics the functions of the products. Consumers can easily see the increased number of cyclones over previous models. So you can see here, this is the actual, um, these are the actual air flows for the cyclones, and this cover co closely follows those. No attempt has been made to cover the workings of the machine with shaped casings or covers, so they could put a, a case over here, they could have put a domed cover here, but they deliberately didn't. Also, Dyson often colour codes parts that are protected by patents yellow to actually just highlight where the, the, the patented technology is in the product. Other things with the Dyson DC39, the actual air, uh, airflow through the machine is obvious to the user. This makes it easier to clear blockages. You, it's quite easy to see where the air flows and through this handle. And if there's a blockage, you can locate it because it's easy. It, it's clear to the user wh where the blockage might be. The main cylinder is moulded from a clear thermoplastic so users can actually see the cyclone technology working and it course, also makes it easy to see when, the, when it is full. So here's some exam tips. To get maximum marks when you're writing about products in the exam be specific about a product. Don't talk about a general product like a vacuum cleaner, learn about a product like the Dyson and talk about it. Select a product that you have good knowledge of because then you can talk about actual features. So again, you need to prep yourself before the exam and know about something like the Dyson. Describe how the form and function are linked. Try and think in terms of benefits to the user of the product. Which of the features give benefits to the user of the product? And if necessary, use diagrams to support your answers. Here's a, a, a question you could look at, and this one is a, a past paper exam question um, about lemon squeezers, and it asks questions like, how does this product function? How do the materials uh, used affect the functionality? How do ergonomics affect the functionality? And the exam question you could look at is this one also shows, contrasts that product with this product, which is a plastic lemon squeezer. So, it would look at the two products contrasting the aluminium alasse lemon squeezer with the plastic lemon squeezer and how the form and function affected there. So that is a typical exam question example. Okay, thank you for watching Mr. Ridley's product design and good luck in your exam.